One of the things that sort of still shocks me about blood cancer is the fact that it, it still feels quite mysterious. And I remember this when, when my father was diagnosed. I remember this when my father died, when people were kind of brave enough to ask what he died of. And I, you know, I would say, look, people didn't know what that was. I wish I'd known a bit more about what to look out for. Looking back on it now, I had all the symptoms that are named. Because I had lack of knowledge, I didn't really know that that was something to look out for and that it was serious. I just thought, I've got a lump, it'll go down with time. And I didn't even connect the dots that all the other things were because of the lump. I'm very good at spotting the symptoms and signs of, of unwellness in my children and I have no qualms about taking them to the doctors just to get things checked out. So if I'm good at picking up on their ailments and willing to act upon them, why would I not apply the same principle to myself? That's a lesson learnt for me. I did have hot flushes in the night as well, but we were going through a bit of a heat wave, so I just put it down to the hot weather, as you do. I had an itchy all over rash, but I also put that down to the hot weather too. I just felt like my whole world was crashing around me. I hadn't really heard of Hodgkin's lymphoma before. I think I've heard of lymphoma, but I hadn't heard of Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was living with these symptoms probably about 18 months before the day I was diagnosed. And I did go to the GP quite a lot within the year, uh, um, yeah, in the run-up. I went to the GP probably around five times, and it was addressing different issues, but they were never resolved. I'd never made the connection between feeling the way I did and this could be something serious. It never occurred to me, absolutely didn't. I've learnt to love life. <laughs> to not take it for granted, because one minute you think you're okay and then the next, it literally can happen in a day and, and you're not okay. I'd never in a million years thought that I'd be in a situation where I'd ever come face to face with cancer. We need to bring blood cancer out of the closet a bit. It's gotta be at the forefront of people's daily attention in a way that I think they are with a lot of other forms of cancer. Um, and I think it's, it's because it doesn't have that kind of mechanical um, series of symptoms. It becomes more difficult to understand, which makes it so much more dangerous. Blood cancer is a, is a failure of the machine. It's, a, um, it's, it's, it's so intangible. It's kind of invisible. It's kind of like a bit of a wake up call to say, look, Megan, we're giving you a second chance here. I just want to make other people out there more aware of what to look out for with the signs and the symptoms because I just feel not enough people know about what to look out for when it comes to blood cancer. Making blood cancer visible is hugely important but on, on so many levels. I do feel grateful. Time is so precious. We have got to be a lot more outspoken about what blood cancer is, how it affects you, um, what its symptoms are. We need to be much more aware of what we're looking for.